Good morning. Welcome to Trinity. We're so glad that you have decided to join us for worship today. And I pray that this worship is a blessing to you. We begin our service with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, everyone. Miss seeing you in church, but we know God is everywhere. We see him on our daily walks, in the skies, in the flowers, the birds, and fellow walkers with their dogs. This is our dog, Darla. And I know he's very merciful. He saved me in January. And uh, hope to see you again soon. Be safe, and may the Lord bless you. I'm Don Worthington, Lois Worthington. Just like to say thank you to Pastor Chapman and all her volunteers for making these opportunities available to our church without being there. And like Lois, we hope to see you all in church again soon.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not know, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that good, nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks to the God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So kids, Jesus talks in that gospel reading today about burdens and heavy things to carry. And so I brought today with me some buckets. And in these buckets is water. So they're pretty heavy, several pounds a piece anyway. And I imagine I could carry them for a while without too much trouble. How long do you think it would be before my hands got tired? A couple of minutes? Maybe 15 minutes? 20 minutes? Do you think I'd go a whole hour carrying these before my hands got tired? I don't think so. I think they'd get tired pretty quick. It gets heavy, right? And my back would get tired, and my shoulders would get tired, and my arms would get sore. Sometimes heavy things are hard to carry, for a very long period of time anyway. Well, Jesus also talks in that reading today about a yoke. Do you know what a yoke is? And I'm not talking about egg yolks. <laughs> no, I'm talking about yolks that they use for like oxen to help them um, be together and to pull a plow. And there's another kind of yoke too, and it's used by people who have to carry water. And it goes across the shoulders kind of like this. Now, this is not a yoke. This is a staff. I don't have a yoke, but I'm going to use this to kind of demonstrate how a water carrying yoke would work. Okay? So... It might get tough for me to carry that water for a very long period of time, but if I use a pole or a yoke and I put one bucket on one end and the other bucket on the other end, 
I can pick them both up at the same time. You want to see? I'll try not to spill. Look at that. Now, they're still pretty heavy, but what if I take that pole and I put it on my shoulder? Now it's balanced, right? And now this hand is not actually carrying anything. It's just helping to balance the load. How long, how far do you think I could go carrying the water like this? Do you think I could walk a lot further? Especially if this had a little padding on it and wasn't digging into my shoulder. This is what Jesus is talking about when he talks about my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying that he'll help us carry heavy loads. He'll make it easier for us. Just like this yoke makes it easier for somebody to carry water. It's pretty cool, isn't it? This week, you should try it out yourself. Find a long broom handle or staff at your house and some buckets. Try it first with empty buckets and then put some water in it and see how much more you can carry when you use a pole or a yoke. I'm going to try to set this down without spilling any water. It does require some balance. But I could go a lot further and carry a lot more that way. Now here's one more thing I want to tell you about yokes today. Have you ever noticed this piece of cloth that I wear around my shoulders every Sunday? Sometimes it's green like it is today. Sometimes it's white. Sometimes it's red. Sometimes it's even blue. This piece of cloth is called a stole. But it really is supposed to remind us of the yoke. Of the yoke like the oxen wear or the yoke like you use to carry water. And when I was called by God to be a pastor, this piece of cloth was put around my shoulders. And the very verse that was said was, come to me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And this reminds me that God has called me to work for his kingdom and to work with him for his kingdom. So when you look at this stole, this piece of cloth around my shoulders, you can remember that yoke, that easy yoke that helps us to bear the burdens of this life. I hope you guys have a great time trying this out this week. Play around with some buckets and some water and some poles and see how far you can carry it or how much you can carry. Be blessed, my friends. We'll see each other again soon. Good morning. Today in our gospel reading, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. A good verse for these days, isn't it? There's a lot of weary people right now. We're weary of figuring out new things. We're weary of worrying about the future. We're weary of staying home. We're weary of wearing masks, as important as they are. You know, lately I've been asking people a lot, how are you doing? How are you doing with all of this? Recently I heard the advice that there's a better question, or at least a follow-up question. And it might be, what have you done to care for yourself today? What have you done to care for yourself today? That question acknowledges that, that life can be hard and that we all need care. And it gives us permission to care for ourselves. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus is acknowledging that life is hard. Discipleship is hard, and we all need care. Jesus gives his followers permission to rest, to find rest for their souls. Jesus goes on to say, Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Yokes, of course, are used for work, <laughs> for oxen plowing fields. The rest that Jesus is talking about isn't couch potato rest, but something different. You know, for us, self-care rest might involve some couch potato time, binge watching Netflix or Hulu, which is not as good, of course, self as uh, 
uh, self-care as maybe going for a walk or learning a new hobby or perfecting that old family recipe that always took too much time to make before. But although there are many ways for us to rest, many ways for us to do self-care, Jesus is talking about a different kind of rest. The rest that Jesus is talking about doesn't come from vacation or gardening or a movie and popcorn. It comes from a shared yoke, a shared burden. You see, here's the thing about yokes and oxen. The oxen are paired off to build off the strengths of the other. A more experienced ox who knows what's expected, who understands the signals of the plow hand, might be paired with a younger ox who's got the strong young muscles, but maybe not as much common sense to know when to pull hard and when to lay off. And by, by pairing them, the farmer makes the burden lighter for both of them. The yokes also that the oxen wear are adjusted for them. They're custom made sometimes to fit them perfectly, to make the work easier, and ultimately to make their work more efficient and more effective. A comfortable ox who isn't overworking will get far more fields plowed than one who's chafing against the yoke or doesn't have the right partner. So when Jesus uses this image, he's telling us that he is calling us to work, yes, but he's calling us to work that fits us, work that is shared, work that accomplishes something. And yes, I know it is still strange to think of work giving rest. It isn't work the opposite of rest. But when the work fits us, fits our gifts and skills and strengths, and when we have someone to share it with, be that Jesus or, or each other, when we can see what we've accomplished, when, when what we do makes a difference, well, then that's different, isn't it? This is what Jesus is calling his followers to, calling us to, a work that is easy. Not easy in and of itself, discipleship rarely is, but work that is easy because it fits us. It uses the gifts and skills we already have. Work that is easy because we can see the results, even if, like a plowed field, it's just the beginning of the process and, and the growth and the harvest are far in the future. Work that is easy because we're partnered with the right partner, the one whose strengths match our weaknesses every time. So my friends, my siblings in the yoke, May you follow and serve Jesus using the gifts you have been given. May you see results from your labors. May you rejoice that you are yoked to the one who will not only walk beside you, but share the burden and make it lighter. Be well, my friends. In these strange, unsettling, and worried times, may you find ways to care for yourself. And may you find rest that refreshes and heals. And in the serving of Christ, these times and always, may you find rest for your weary souls as well. Amen.
It is my privilege every week to share the peace with you, and to encourage you to share that peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you share that peace of God with those in your own home, in your own family? Will you reach out across the internet or with a phone call and pass that peace out in ripples? We are also privileged here at Trinity to be supported by so many generous hearts, including perhaps your own. Thank you so much for your ongoing gifts of support. If you would like to make a gift in support of Trinity's ministry, we encourage you to check out our website or to call our office or to look at Facebook for different ways that you can support. We have an app. You can use text giving. You can have direct transfer from your, your bank account to ours. Um, and of course, you can send in a check. There's all sorts of ways in which you can support with your monetary gifts the ongoing work of Trinity. Of course, we understand that that's not possible for everybody at this time, but we thank you so much for those of you who can. We are also grateful today for the gifts shared with Trinity throughout the years. It has become a tradition here at Trinity for decades, uh, probably, to gather a special group of singers on the Sunday closest to July 4th and to have them give uh, in church an offering of a special anthem, a patriotic song that uh, lifts our hearts during that service. We call them the Trinity Singers. And today we hear one of their anthems from 2018 as they sing in honor of July 4th. Whether alone or with a small group, let us join together to pray to our God, our stronghold, for all the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the phrase, in mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the church around the globe, where Christians are assembling for worship, protect them from viral infection, where Christians are worshiping with print and screen, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who doubt your goodness. Bless pastors, deacons, and committee members as they serve our congregations in this difficult time. 
O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Save the animals whose natural habitat is threatened by climate change or human carelessness. And direct us towards sustainable living. Preserve the fields of Kenya from locusts. Nourish our country's green spaces. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In In mercy, mercy, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations. Keep the world from war. Pave the way for just elections. Protect citizens from the designs of autocratic rulers. Uphold our courts. Guide our national and state governments in finding ways to redress the wrongs of racism and to ensure the equality for all. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In In mercy, mercy, receive receive our our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful, feed the hungry, house the homeless, shelter the runaways, heal the many who are newly afflicted with the coronavirus, and guide researchers in discovering a vaccine. Visit the sick whom we name here, Rita Lorenz, Kitty Shaw, and those on our prayer list. Be with the family of Lorene Cackline as they grieve her loss. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In, In mercy, mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for infants and young children, that they may be carefully tended. We pray for teens, that they keep patience throughout the contagion. We pray for school boards, that they find solutions for the fall. We pray for the unemployed, that they find jobs. Especially this day, we pray for Mike and for all those in our congregation who have lost their jobs. We pray for medical workers, that they remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, in mercy receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray finally for ourselves. Show us that the yoke of faith is easy. May we find our rest in you. Hear now our private petitions. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In In mercy, mercy, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith, especially Lorraine Cackline. Comfort all who mourn their dead, and at the end, bring us and all your people into your eternal rest. O God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In In mercy, mercy, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, for the sake of him who bore the heavy yoke for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, whenever you are worshiping, will you join me in praying the words that our Savior taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank the Jasinskis, both Mike and Dan and Logan Wenhold, um, for our special music for this week. We are blessed to have so many talented musicians sharing their skills with us during this time. This Saturday, the 11th, we will be retraining some of our ushers. Um, if you would like to be a part of that, please do call the office or email us to let us know that you'd like to be part of that retraining as we move hopefully closer towards some in-person worship. We will have youth group on Sunday night, the 7th, so 
you uh, watch your inboxes for that link. Receive now the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace, live God's love for all. Thanks be to God.